Bundesliga season is over. And for the sake of all of our collective blood pressure, it's probably for the best. This was one of the craziest seasons and conclusions that we've seen for quite some time. I'm not even a Dortmund or a Bayern fan and I gotta admit I've been having frequent heart palpitations since Saturday. It's the closest title race we've seen in a very long while. Dortmund, who very much held the upper hand going into the final day, just could not keep it up and ultimately crumbled at the last hurdle. As a result of this, Bayern Munich have only gone ahead and won their 11th straight league title. 11. I didn't see this coming. Truly. In all seriousness, the final match day was a wild ride from start to finish. It really could have gone either way up until the very last moments. And because of that, we have to talk about it. Yo, what is going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Going into match day 34, there was a real buzz around the football world. Bundesliga fans and people that don't pay attention to the Bundesliga at all felt as though there was something in the air. Bayern Munich had been going through their worst season in over a decade with a myriad of problems plaguing them throughout. Shaky players, shaky management, shaky upper management, it was all shaky. Things were not going well. Dortmund, on the other hand, were having a good season. Although, I mean, if we're all being honest, it wasn't a significantly good season. The max points they could have finished on was 73. They've surpassed that mark twice in the past seven years and have gotten damn near it another handful of times. For example, last year, they finished on 69. All the same, they were performing when they needed to. And credit where credit is due, they do deserve some major props for making this title race as close as it eventually ended up being. A not-so-ideal start to the season saw them slump to 6th after 15 games. Losing 6 out of 15 games is simply not champion material. At that point, it didn't look like this team could claw themselves back. But not only did they do just that, they only lost one game after that. The loss was against you know who. Result after result after result, and eventually they found themselves at the top of the pile after 25 games played. Now, you really do have to appreciate how impressive of a resurgence that is. Then again, once they started to sniff glory, their legs inevitably became wobbly. Eight straight wins in a row, only to draw against fierce rival Schalke in a match that would have seen them draw level at the top, only to win the next week and take the top spot, and then to lose 4-2 to Bayern Munich in the most highly anticipated De Classica in years. Also, this was a Bayern Munich that had just fired Julian Nagelsmann. It was, it was literally Thomas Tuchel's first game in charge. They got knocked out of the DFB Pokal and lost 3-0 to Manchester City in the Champions League over the next 10 days. Yet, somehow, Bayern Munich beating Dortmund at home remains one of the most inevitable things in all of world football. That, and ironically, City not scoring at Tottenham away. Nobody's perfect. At several points, it looked like Bayern were literally conceding defeat and handing Dortmund an easy layup to pick up the title. The way the scheduling was working, Bayern Munich would play most of their matches before Dortmund, so they would essentially drop points, Dortmund would see the bright lights, get blinded, and then drop points too. Rinse and repeat. That was until the penultimate game of the season. RB Leipzig, everyone's favorite team to hate in Germany, beat Bayern, causing everyone to reassess how they felt about the club. Dortmund thrashed Augsburg and all of a sudden a lot of people collectively felt as though the league was done and dusted. Two points ahead, going into the final game, people were finding it far too difficult to hide their excitement at the prospect of a new champion. Because the gap in goal difference was astronomical, Dortmund had to win. They did so and they were guaranteed to be golden. More so, all they had to do was win at home against Mainz, a team that finished in ninth place and that they'd already defeated earlier in the season away. In seven days, the season is finished. Then the boys can buy anything they want, the next car, the next house, the next holiday, but you can't buy this moment. We have worked very hard for it. We suffered for it. Now we need to take the last step together with our fans in our stadium and our city to bring back the championship trophy to Dortmund at last. Encouraging words from coach Edin Terzic before the final hurdle. For a second, it looked like maybe, just maybe, we could see something remarkable happen. What's that? Bayern won their match? No stress, Dortmund have the odds ever in their favor. They'll definitely- Oh. Oh dear. This image is the embodiment of pure agony 
if you represent black and yellow. And the actual match was even worse. They found themselves two goals down within 24 minutes. Truly unacceptable behavior. What made this match so incredibly difficult to watch is that while we can claim that this team is mentally weak, which I'm not gonna argue with at this point, it just didn't really seem to be their day at all. Look at this man, 29 shots. 74% possession. At 1-0 down, Sebastian Allaire missed a penalty. They go 2 down, and despite setting up camp in Mainz's half for the remainder of the game, all they could do was manage a couple shots to the post, an eventual draw, and a feeling of despair. Who takes the blame here? Jude Bellingham's injury which sidelined him for the last two games, an injury to Karim Adeyemi late in the first half, Bayern's plot armor that saw them drawing their match until the 89th minute just to break Dortmund hearts, Marco Reus's curse that saw him move to Dortmund a year after they last won it, then proceed to suffer perpetual injuries and watch this happen. 11 times? Sadly, it's a combination of everything. Of course this team is no stranger to disappointments, but this time feels different really does. They have a very big psychological hurdle to overcome if they want to return strong. A hurdle that's going to prove insanely difficult if we're to believe the current news cycle. For the second year running, Dortmund looks set to lose their best player. Not just him, but other standout performers too. Sad times for Dortmund. Sad times for Bayern too. Yes, they won, but they simply weren't good enough this year, right? I mean, certainly not when it comes to the standards that they've shown us over the years. According to former Bayern president and current board member Uli Hoeneß, there are several reasons for that. Two of the most prominent were now former CEO Oliver Kahn and former sporting director Hassan Salihamidzic. Both were fired mere hours after the title win. In the case of Khan, according to Hernes himself, it's said that he himself wasn't necessarily the biggest of the problems, rather the advisors that he chose to surround himself with. We would have acted the same way even with three titles. This decision had to be made. Again, the words of Hernes. Now, I honestly doubt you could justify firing a treble winning CEO, but at the same time, things have been eerily chaotic at the Allianz. So who knows what's really been going on and what's been said behind closed doors. It got so bad that Khan wasn't even allowed to attend the team's title winning celebrations. Tough. Having said all of this, we do have to face facts. This season has been more about Bayern's dip in form than about Dortmund's improvement. All the same, it's been a wild ride. It's hard to imagine Bayern will allow themselves to falter in consecutive years. Regardless, we've just seen that even in an off year, not much changes. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys think about the title race. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I will catch you in the next one.